Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Devo Tyndall, who is the Chief Experience, Experience Officer at the Fusion Brands. How are you doing, Devo? Hey, John. Thanks for having me. I'm doing well. Thank you. I heard yeah. you say San Diego. I didn't get to ask you. That's where I'm from. Oh, it is. It is fantastic. Yeah, yeah well, it's... Uh, it's nice and bright this morning. Maybe a little uh, warmer than where you are. Uh, I don't know. I think we're. Yeah, I don't really know. It's it's really nice weather here in Charlotte. It's very mild. Excellent. And uh, Devo is an extraordinary entrepreneur, holistic branding strategist, content creator who redefines brand narratives with innovation and authenticity. Over fifteen year career, you've embarked on an audacious journey to rewrite the rules of branding through your own entrepreneurial adventure. Uh, venture as the founder of Fusion Creative. And what we're going to talk about today is unleashing the power of unapologetic branding. So I guess we'll just kick it off with the de uh, definition of what, what do you mean by unapologetic branding as opposed to, I guess, the opposite, which is apologetic <laughs> branding. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a buzzword, okay? Let's just go with it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I, I really, I, I think um, from from my perspective, I'm I'm a bit brash, and I have been most of my career. So I, I had to sort of learn how to kind of rein that in uh, for impact. And one of the things that I noticed in both in my corporate career and then working in the entrepreneurial world, and now working with entrepreneurs specifically, is that they sort of feel like they have to follow. Um, a set of templates for anything that they do and not really sticking and being true to their core and, and their values and what they believe in and, and really kind of falling back on what's trending and, and what other people are doing and sort of following, following that instead of really focusing and honing on what they're good at, what their knowledge is, what their values are, and being authentic, boldly authentic in that space. And it's not just a buzzword. It's really sort of understanding the ethos and and more importantly, what's the value proposition that you bring to the table for whatever industry you're working in? And how can you carry out that message in a unique capacity without sounding like everybody else? Yeah, and it's and it's interesting because, you know, as you mentioned like authenticity and, uh, you know, that's I think that was actually word of the year last year or something on one of these things. And it's in it, it is almost a buzzword nowadays. But I think uh, a lot of people, uh, as you said, especially when they're entrepreneurs starting businesses or whatever, is they take their cues from what everybody else is doing, just like you said, and then rather than look look at themselves and so as you said, is like how can I express my authenticity, my personality, my principles, and all of that? Because I think people sometimes, and and you work with the with a lot of entrepreneurs, I think they, you know, lack the confidence maybe at the beginning to be their authentic selves. Yeah, I think a lot of people are really focused on. And I was I was guilty of this as well early on in my career, and it's it's sort of how I came across this idea, and and, and it's really focusing in on brand experience as opposed to just the image of it. So everybody's, especially with social media now, John, like everybody is so focused on what they look like, what they sound like, how are they matching up to everyone else, and they're not really focusing on the value that really compels people to use your service, which is the experience that you provide for them, and and that experience can be uniquely driven and uniquely different from from the same 10 people doing the exact same thing you're doing if you can sort of touch on that emotional connection that emotional thread that your product or your the service offers for whomever you're trying to sell that to yeah and uh no i, I agree with you and i think also the the uh it's it's the it's the connection as you said and the experience and 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 that's the thing with with sometimes when people talk about uh, branding you know a lot of people just think oh branding is your logos and your colors and all of this and it's just a, a marketing thing whereas as you say your branding is really the experience somebody has when they engage with you regardless with your company regardless of how that engagement starts or where that engagement continues and i think a lot of times people overlook that fact that it's also a it's also a dynamic experience right it's not a one off yeah it's a complete ecosystem really it, the word branding gets a bad rap only because it's a benign term that that has been misrepresented and people don't really quite know what it means so mm -hmm. it's so i, I try to I try to position them as branding is more of the esoteric, whereas marketing, for example, the two go hand in hand. They're distinctly mm -hmm. different, but they do go hand in hand. You can't have one without the other. So the, the branding is more of the esoteric, whereas marketing your brand is more of the literal and sort of the tactical, right? And, and from my perspective, they're a complete ecosystem. And that means mm -hmm. that every aspect from your logo design 
to your digital marketing, to your social media, to your customer service. It's all interconnected and has to be consistent in order to deploy that experience, if you will, mm -hmm. so that every single time someone interacts with your brand on any of the channels I just mentioned, or the way you answer your phone, or the website, or the voicemail yeah. greeting that you have, whatever it is, they're always consistent because the, each one of them sort of feeds and works off of each other. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, you know, and as humans, we're unfortunately, we're hardwired often to default to the only bad experience or not even doesn't even have to be a bad experience. If, if one experience is slightly less than all the others, we tend to default to that one and use that as as almost the example for the whole thing. Therefore, it's important to have that uh, consistent experience, regardless of, of who or what you're interacting with. Yeah, absolutely yourself as a consumer when you go to a restaurant for example right you, you know you're sort of looking for a, and you may not know this but we all unconsciously do this right every time we sit down and use a product and i'm using restaurants as an example you know how were you seated where were you seated mm -hmm. was the host or the hostess friendly to you was the was the meal on time was the experience was the food worth eating is it worth coming back for was the ambiance good was it overcrowded like there's all these different elements that and every one of us has sort of our own unique parameters that we mm -hmm. use as our benchmarks to say this is a good experience or not a good experience and so it's really important whether you're a restaurant or a service provider or a business coach or anybody in in my world that like you just said that all of the touch points are consistent because if if any of them are lagging that stins that that sort of tends to to stand out, right? Mm -hmm. But if you were lagging in one area, but everything else was phenomenal, it sort of serves to sort of override that for for the experience of whomever is engaging with it. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like you said, I mean, the rest of the experience would have to be really good to overcome overcome any of the snafus you might have. And the other thing uh, to Devo is that regardless of whether it's a one person, well, one two person organization or many person organization, it's important that everybody is understands the the brand and understands what you know what the what the organization or the enterprise stands for and able to articulate it but it needs to be understood by everybody in the organization and again i think that's something that often people fall down they think well this is just a sales and marketing thing yeah so you, you can look at the models and, and traditionally you'll see that top down or bottom up how how, are, how is the leadership of the company running their brand or their business is it a top down or is it a bottom up and 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 it's very clear to sort of see if if the philosophy uh, with within all the individuals of the company is being dispensed and instilled properly or not because um, you very, very quickly find out who is sort of living and drinking the Kool-Aid in, in, in the company. And if you have people that are sort of outliers who haven't bought into the system, then they're just going to they're going to they're just going to cause gaps and chasms and everything. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, tell me uh, of some of the without naming companies, you don't have to, but um, some of the work you've done. You tell me some of the the brands you've been able to really bring out the the, the authenticity in and really make that brand unapologetic. Yeah, I'm working right now. I'll just use an example of someone I'm working with right now. Um, we're, we're working with a, a chiropractor here who relocated to Charlotte, had some considerable success in a different market um, outside of Charlotte, and they relocated to, to to warmer climates and just sort of they're in the back end of their of their career, mm -hmm. um, but they're not ready to give things up. And so, you know, they're still trying to build a brand here. And one of the things that we found out early on, because we we take every client through this really exhaustive brand discovery, and that brand discovery is sort of it's multiple prongs. It's so that we can understand who you are and mm -hmm. and how we can best show up and and find and and provide value. But more importantly, it's a very cathartic exercise for you as the business owner, so you can sort of see the gaps or the areas of opportunity that that you're not yet touching or or the potential that you could touch on, right? And so, you know, I, I have this fond saying that somebody shared with me many years ago. We we're not able to read our label because we often get stuck inside our own jar. And so this brand discovery offers a, a, a unique and outside perspective, if if you will, and really helping understand for us so we can market, but for them, the potential of what they could grow into. And so one of the things we discovered really early on was they were sort of still living off the legacy of what they had created before. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the market has adapted. Um, there's more people that are doing the service. And more importantly, because of the digital world of marketing, there's more people that you could potentially expose your product to, but the same people are also trying to expose their product to them. And and they hadn't, while, while they were still offering the same value in, in the sense of they're an amazing chiropractor, they have a very holistic practice, they do functional medicine, they do a bunch of really good stuff, 
but they're almost stuck in a in a, in a time anachronism of sort of like we're living off yesterday's success mm-hmm. and they haven't adapted and adopted modern marketing so that they can amplify their message to a, to the current audience. And so what we're doing right now is going in and revamping that entire brand message and, and implementing digital tools, sales funnels, email funnels, landing pages, follow-up CRM solutions so that when their clients leave the brand, they're, they're pinged with information. And it's not sales. It's just mm-hmm. information. It's education. It's keeping the brand front and center, your referral programs, ambassador programs, all these different things that we're building into the brand so that they can stay front and center and start marketing to an audience, a very specific audience that they want to market to because um, as, as they've moved into this new day and age, if you will, they're really honing in on a very specific type of service that they want to offer, but they weren't sharing that message with anybody. It was very confusing and and very sort of a didactic approach. Mm-hmm. No, that's and that, that's a great that's a great example. And I love what you said about that. Uh, you know, we're we're inside the jar; we can't read our own label. And I and I think that uh, I think a lot of organizations probably suffer from that. And a lot of people suffer from that today because you also, if you've been around for a while, you kind of assume your brand means something, and and it may. Have have changed it may have altered in the perception of the of the consumer over time yeah you're spot on and and if you're not doing self checks introspective self checks i mean that's why we have therapists that's why we have coaches that's why we have outside counsel that's why we have a board of directors because you know we do get sort of stuck in our lane and 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 we've 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 had a relative modicum of success with something. So we think, okay, this is how we've done it. This is how we're always going to do it. This is what we're going to do till we die. But it's not really that the market doesn't operate that way so much anymore. And that's not to say that you're getting away from your tried and true. Mm-hmm. It's just saying that the way you share your message with the audience today, because as consumers, we have so many choices. Like, I mean, in a couple of seconds through my phone, I can find 10 other people who are doing exactly what he's doing. And if they speak to me, if they resonate to me a little bit more, then I'm probably going to go in that direction. So it's really important as business owners that we are optimizing how we're connecting with our audience, whether it's through social media, on our website, or any of the other channels that you're using. Yeah, and obviously, then the you know the bigger cha- and and the even bigger challenge is that we we have we have more generations in the workforce than we've ever had before. We've more generations of consumers than we've mm-hmm. had before, and therefore, you know, getting your message out is you often have to you know get your message out in different ways for different audiences, and it's becoming you know it's it, it is becoming a challenge that you have to be able to kind of hit different audiences in different ways. Yeah, you you have to be iterative in everything you do. You have to be strategic in everything you do. You have to understand what works, be able to look at the data, know how to interpret the data, and then and then based upon those interpretations, be nimble and flexible enough to make any pivots that are necessary. Mm-hmm. But at the core of all of those changes, at the core of all of those distribution channels that you're working, it's still critically important that you're consistent in what you're saying consistent in how you're, you're showing mm-hmm. up, whether it's on Twitter, whether it's on LinkedIn or just your website or, or standard emails. You don't want to give out mixed messaging to people uh, in order to, to, to drive traffic. You can play on different channels, but you still want to be generally saying the same type of message, but just know what the audience is and how they're going to receive it. So an example of that is, you know, Twitter is shorter in terms of the short form content, whereas LinkedIn has a different type of approach. But that doesn't mean you change your core values and message. Yeah. You just change the output style. Yeah, no, no, absolutely, absolutely. And 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 then, um, you know, how do you how do you help people? Uh, because a lot of times, I mean, a lot of this comes down to is really understanding who your target audience is, and and sometimes that's difficult. Even for small businesses, sometimes it's difficult, and entrepreneurs because you want to kind of go well everybody's my customer but you know that's not true so um so how do you help people and the other thing too is as i said i mean sometimes your 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 target customer may change a little bit over time or need tweaking but but you have to stay on top of that and that's sometimes i think people sort of like to sort of go well i've got that one down i don't need to worry about that well well the problem is is that that avatar that person that you're selling to they also are changing and they are mm-hmm. also evolving in in their buying pat and their buying habits because just like everyone else they have more information that they're being exposed to right and so for for us it really all begins with that brand discovery that i was talking about yeah. which is a, a, a core analysis of a foundational understanding of who they are as a company and what values do they stand behind 
and what's the value proposition that they're bringing to the table? In other words, what problem am I solving today? Mm -hmm. So, so that when I'm speaking to my customer, they can easily and readily identify what solution I'm trying to present to them. Does that make sense? And so yeah. it, it, when you when you have a clear understanding of who you are and what you are and why you exist and the problems that you solve, you're better equipped to be able to communicate that message to your ideal buyer. And so once you've had that foundation sorted out, then we focus in on the end buyer. And that end buyer is, is an amalgamation of data, um, buyer trends, looking at reports and on in terms of like industry standards and the competitive analysis, just so we can understand who the type of people are that they want to market to. And then we create this ideal avatar that that we basically know their buying patterns, their shopping patterns, you know, where do they live? What are what, are, what sort of other tools are they using so that you can then market along those channels when you speak to them? Yeah. And one of the other things that you just alluded to a moment ago is, uh, and I think this is, uh, this is a big one too, is, yeah, there's lots of information out there and consumers and, and customers, prospects have, have access to a ton of information, but they also have an access to a ton of information and they don't know how to, you know, that can be overload. They don't know how to interpret it. Sometimes they kind of go, whoa, this is too much here. So anytime you can help break, you can help break through that confusion and help people understand things simply. I mean, that's a win for any brand. Sure, sure. Well, buyers are really smart. They do have a lot of information, but we're really smart because we're armed with so much information, right? In a matter of seconds, I can tell you, just to continue with the restaurant example, in a matter of seconds, I can tell you, you know, a re the restaurants that are in my proximity, the type of food that they're going to serve, the type of experience that they offer, and then you can read the reviews really quickly. Like, what are other people saying about it? So it's, it's our job to make sure that we're front and center on that information and that whatever experience we're providing for, for our audience is very clearly delineated and again what do i bring to the table that's going to change the experience for the person using my using my service or my product mm -hmm. and when you work with the, when you when you work with um, with your clients i mean when you first have that conversation i mean do do they understand what's meant by experience cuz uh, like i said sometimes it's like the experience and think well it's just the place or you know you come <laughs> in and you're greeted or whatever but understand that holistic experience I think everybody comes at information differently and their interpretation of it is differently, but our job is to be able to explain that succinctly um, and through the brand discovery, which again, it's a, it's a pretty exhaustive multiple hours. You know, we lock ourselves in a conference room or in the, in the studio for a few days to, to complete this. It becomes very clear, very quickly where their gaps are and, and what, what sort of knowledge that they're not necessarily familiar with because the process is very interactive and it's very engaging. It's not just us sitting up here writing down, mm -hmm. asking questions. Like we're involved in a very interactive workshop, if you will. And so, so the client gets to sort of see, live, touch, feel everything that, they're, that they want to embody in, in the process of creating that. So yeah, everybody sort of comes at it at different times, but ultimately it's, um, it's our job to make sure that they understand it clearly. Mm -hmm. So just put, um, putting on your futurist hat for a moment, where do, what, what, what do you see coming down the pike? Like, are there going to be new channels? Are there going to be new ways of like emphasizing your brand or, or what are some of the, some of the areas that people need to focus on in the future? <laughs> that's an esoteric question because it depends upon what the governments do in the next few years, doesn't yeah, it? That's true. Um, I, I think that there's going to be a huge emphasis continuing with the user experience and and how you can engage with them whether it's through vr or virtual reality or augmented reality or being able to engage with them in 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 scenarios where they can almost taste it before they before they experience it and so being able to focus on these customer centric it's becoming a more customer centric than it ever was before model and being able to target the types of people that you want to work with is really critical and, and, and there's a variety of ways that you do that you just have to decide, you know, which of the channels you want to play in and, and then and then optimize that. But I think um, ultimately it's still going to be centered around putting more control and autonomy into the hands of the user so that they get to decide what sort of experience they want to be part of. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Good point. I could I could see that. Absolutely. Well, listen, Devo, this has been fantastic. All of Devo's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Well, I'm a, uh, I'm a brand consultant, brand strategist, and, and marketing expert, and I have been playing in the sandbox of corporate and now private entrepreneurial for the better half of 30 years. Um, I have owned several companies, and so I've sort of lived in that playground of building companies and seeing what works and doesn't work. Uh, I'm now on my fourth business right now. And if, if, if for me, really what, ex what I excel at most is, 
helping brands amplify their message and get that to a very specific audience and teaching you um, in the process. So we do a lot of education and what we do, not just brand management, but a lot of education because an empowered source of information, how I see it is if, if you're knowledgeable and educated on it, you're more inclined to sort of adapt the things that we're asking you to do. So rather than just telling you, let's do it, we take a bottom up approach and teach our clients, these are the, this is why we do the things we do, this is how we do them, and this is what we need you to do to be part of the solution. And so um, what we found is, is when we in, incorporate a lot of education in the process, we have people that, you, you, you know, you ask the question, are people mm -hmm. less inclined or more inclined to adapt to it? They're more inclined to adapt to it because they're part of the problem, they're part of the solution. Um, um, you can find me on Fusion, creativebranding.com. I also have a podcast called Unlearn Everything. Um, and if I may do a shameless plug, I have a 30-day, yeah, I'm actually offering, and I can send this to you, um, a 30-day sort of digital networking amplification course where every day you'll get a download from us or an email from us on optimizing your profile, cleaning up your social media channels, and then all the other tools and techniques that we're doing with our clients and on ourselves to sort of spread our message out with, with more efficacy. Yeah, fantastic. Well, go check it out. Uh, as, as we were discussing, you know, it's a, the world's a noisy place. You need your brand to stand out. You need your brand to be focused. So go check out uh, the Fusion Brands and, and Devo's work. And, and thank you again for coming today. Thank you for watching and listening. I'll see you all again soon.